A toy rocket is shot vertically upwards and an observer watches from a point 1800 feet away from the launch point. The height s of the rocket in feet after t seconds is given by the formula s equals 400 t minus 16 t squared. How fast is the distance changing between the observer and the rocket when the rocket is rising and 2400 feet off the ground? So this is a little bit different than, than we're used to. Let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's the ground. Let's say this is the launch point of the rocket. And over here is the observer. We're told that the distance separating those two points is 1800 feet. And the rocket is going to be rising um, straight up. So let's draw that like this. This is the rocket. Now the the height of the rocket is off the ground is denoted by s. And we're interested in the distance between the observer and the rocket. So I'll draw that line right there. Why don't we call it x? So that's a start. The This is a right angle, of course. What are we given? And what do we want? Well, we're given the formula for s. It's 400t minus 16t squared. And what, would, what do we want here? Well, how fast is the distance between the observer and the rocket changing. So that's going to be dx dt when the rocket is rising and 2400 feet off the ground. <coughs> so it's when s is 2400, we want to find dx dt. Well, uh, I guess the obvious relationship between these rates or these variables is found by Pythagoras' theorem. So we know that x squared equals 1800 squared plus s squared. Let's implicitly differentiate that uh, with respect to time. So 2x times dx dt. The derivative of this with respect to time is just 0 because it's a constant. And over here we have similarly 2s times ds dt. Now notice that uh, while the zero just goes away and the twos are actually going to cancel, so we could write this as x dx dt equals s ds dt. Well, the, we, we know the formula for s in terms of t, so we can easily find ds dt. So what is ds dt? If s is given by this rule, the derivative of that with respect to time is easy. It's 400 minus 16 times 2, which is 32t. All right. And why don't we just, we're looking for dx dt, so why don't we just finish solving for dx dt explicitly? So it's this remains the same. And then we just divide it by x. So we've isolated for a formula for dx dt. We would like now to evaluate that when s is 2400. So this value of s is going to be replaced by 2400. But we also need something to put in for t and for x when s is 2400. Why don't we think about that over here? Well, let's write down our rule here that s is 400t minus 16t squared. When s is 2400, let's replace that. And we obtain an equation in t. If we solve this for t, we'll have something to put in the place here later on. Let's bring it, this is a quadratic equation, so we want to bring everything to one side to get 0 on the other side. Let's bring everything to the left-hand side. I bring this over, it becomes a positive 16t squared. I bring this one over, it becomes a minus 400t. And this 2400 is positive and it stays on the left side so it doesn't change. And now we have zero. 
let's divide everything by 16 here. We, we can do that. For 16 goes into 400 and it also goes into 2400. So after I divide everything by 16, I obtain this equation. That's a little bit messy. 150. Now you could definitely solve this with the quadratic equation, but it's actually not too hard to just see that it factors because what's one way to multiply to 150? 15 times 10. And if we do negative 15 times negative 10, those add up to negative 25. So we can factor this quite easily. But if you wanted to use the quadratic equation, that'd be fine too. Sometimes you have to use the quadratic equation, but this time it factors, so let's just do it like that. So if this, if we have two pr things multiplying to zero, that means either this one is zero or this one is zero. What makes this first quantity equal to zero? Well, t is equal to 15. And what makes this one equal to zero? t equals 10. So now we kind of reach an interesting point. Which one do we really choose? Well, let's just go back for a second and think about something here observe something. You know, this rocket, it fires straight up. It's going to reach some highest point. We could figure it out, but it doesn't matter. And then it's going to fall back to the ground, right? So there's actually two points in time where the distance is 2,400 feet off the ground. When on the way up, it passes 2,400 feet in height. And then on the way down, it also passes 2,400 feet in height. So there's a little little phrase here that we need to pay real close attention to when the rocket is rising. So on the way up, that's when we're interested in this question, not on the way down. And now these two values of time make sense. Um, after 10 seconds, the rocket will be at 2,400 feet. It'll go up a little bit higher and then it's gonna start falling down and then at 15 seconds, it's going to be at 2,400 feet again. So since we're interested in the question when it's rising, we actually want to select the first point in time, not this one. Okay, This t equals 15 is on the way down. This t equals 10 is on the way up when it's rising. And that's what the question asks for. So good, we know something in this equation here. We know something to put in for s, namely 2,400. We know something to put in for t. That's 10. But what about for x? Well, we can look at our main equation here and uh, find out what value of x to put in for that. So this one is a little bit different in that usually this substitution step here, we only usually have to do that one time, but in this one, we have to actually do it twice. So in our main equation here, x squared equals 1800 squared plus s squared. We want to know what x is when s is 2400, so let's put that in. And if we work that out, uh, 18, 1800 squared plus 2400 squared, and then we take the square root of that, x turns out to be 3000, a nice whole number. And now we're ready to go. So let's remember what we want. We want dx dt when s is 2400. Here's our formula for dx dt. So we would like to find out what dx dt is when s is 2400. And after all our work, we have something to plug in for each of these three variables here, right? s is, of course, 2400. And then 400 minus 32 multiplied by t. We worked that over, over here. It's 10 all over the value of x. We worked that out over here, it's 3000. And if we type that all in, it turns out to be 64. And the units on that is feet per second. And that's our answer. That's the distance that the observer and the rocket, that's the distance that's changing between them at this particular point in time.